What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny Frill, whatever you want to call it, man. Today's slate of games, 12 of them. I've tried to record this, this video at least 10 times. At least. It's got my brain fried. So I'm, I'm going to make it very simplistic for myself and not talk about or try to talk about every single thing I saw today. Is that fair? Is that fair? I'm going to talk about the major things, of course. But if I don't talk about your favorite team today, my apologies, bro. There's a lot of season left. We will eventually get to it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let's, get, let's just get into it, man. I want to talk about Bradley Beal. We will talk about, of course, the Lakers and Philly and all of the great stuff. Tobias Harris calling game. But I want to spend a couple minutes talking to or about Bradley Beal real quick. Because Bradley, yeah, it's that time, bro. It's that time. Between these back-to-back -back games, I think I think it's, it's that time, bro. If you walk into the office right now and there's not a single rational NBA fan, they'll be upset with you requesting a trade. You've done everything for the team, bro. From you yesterday, the man was on the bench after the game or during the game praying to God because the man just want to win basketball games. And then today, Scott Brooks, we, we got to talk about it, bro. Scott Brooks, is they're on the second day of a back-to-back. -back. Remember that. He plays Bradley Beal the entire second half in a blowout to try to save his job. It's disgusting, bro. It's the second game of the back-to-back -back in a blowout. Bradley Beal is forced to play every single minute. Bro, just chalk it up as an L. Just chalk it up as an L. Russell Westbrook's not there. Half your team can't play because of the, the virus. Just chalk it up as an L, bro. There's no reason for him to play as many minutes today as he did, especially because they were getting blown out. But anyway, I have a, I have a group of friends that are Washington Wizards fans. And I straight up asked them, if Bradley Beal walked into the office and requested a trade, how would you feel? And basically the consensus was, we'd be sad. Because you got to remember, man, they, they drafted Bradley Beal, I think at 19 years old out of Florida. And when he was drafted, a lot of the draft experts said he'll probably be just, just be a catch-and-shoot spot-up shooter. And he has progressed to a 30-point-per-game scorer. So I understand growing this attachment to the players. I'm guilty of it, too. You know, I'm guilty of it, too. I was so sad when we traded Jimmy Butler from Chicago. I mean... I don't know how that trade has turned out yet. <laughs> the, the jury's still out on that trade. But I was so sad to see my one of my favorite players on my favorite team gets traded. But I understood it. I understood why it had to be done. And that's basically what my friends were saying. They'd be sad, but they'd understand. They'd understand. And let's be honest with each other. Like I said, they're, they're missing a lot of stuff right now. Russell Westbrook can't play back-to-backs. Rui Hachimura, Denny Abdiya, these are guys that are rotational players for them that can't play. Today, other than Bradley, other than maybe Robin Lopez... The rest of the team is wouldn't even get minutes on any quality team. So it's him and G-Leaguers. And he plays the entire second half. It's, it's kind of disgusting, bro. And you got to think about it. From Washington Wizards fan, this is, this is the way I would look at it if I was a Washington Wizards fan. Um, Drew Holiday got traded for two first-round picks and three swaps. The Brooklyn Nets gave up seven years of draft capital to get James Harden, right? Bradley Beal is somewhere between Drew Holiday and James Harden. You're probably looking at five first-round picks and potentially some young players. I don't know. But you will get a hefty haul for Bradley Beal because he is in his prime and because he is so damn good. He just is. And realistically speaking, a healthy Washington Wizards team, what's the ceiling? What's the ceiling? A playoff team? And I know some fans are cool with just being a playoff team. And if that's the case, I understand you're not trading Bradley Beal. But at the end of the day, I think that the end goal for every NBA fan to see is to see their favorite team get that Larry O.B. Get that Larry O'Brien trophy. And this construction of the team will never get there. So why not hit the reset? Run ahead the reset. Hit some draft picks. Hit the reset. That, that, that would be my opinion. Bradley, if you walked out, nobody's going to be upset with you whatsoever. All right, let's get to the nasty televised game, man. The Lakers and the Philadelphia 76ers. Man, it was just one of the better games. I love when we get nasty televised games that are good. But listen, well, since it was on national TV, let me talk about the broadcast just for a second. Tobias Harris hits a literal game winner. It was like a, ha a half a second on the clock. I don't know. And the broadcast didn't react. Nice shot by Tobias. No, game-winning shot by Tobias Harris. How? How? How, Doris? How do we not get hyped for that? I'm not even a fan of these teams, and I'm, I was hyped. There was such a great play by Doc Rivers to drop a play where they get the switch on Alex Caruso, and Tobias Harris creates the space. Don't send me the screenshots of him pushing. It's basketball. He creates the space. He gets the shot over Alex Caruso. I don't know how you don't react other than what they did. Anyway. 76ers, other than them almost blowing it, looked really good. Other than that, what, two to three minute period where they almost blew the whole game, they looked really, really good. And this is a team that is scary because Joel Embiid, of course, playing an MVP caliber level. I hate that he fell like that. I hate that they showed the replay six times with audio. Like, like hearing 
a body hit the floor like that, it just it just makes me cringe. So um, him playing an MVP caliber level, Tobias Hurst playing an all-star caliber level because he should be in conversations for an all-star appearance. I doubt he will get in there because there's so many other players out east that might get it over him, but he should be in conversations. And then Ben Simmons was aggressive today. Go watch my video from a few days ago. My main criticism with Ben Simmons completely is his aggression. And when he, I get, people were reminding me that Ben Simmons always puts up really good games against the Lakers. And I don't know if it's because you're playing against LeBron, you want to show out, or it's because when you're playing against the Lakers, 99% of the time you're on national TV. But he always puts up really good games. And he came out, he scored six straight points at the beginning of the game. And I'm like, yes, this is all we ask from you, Ben. Be aggressive, play make. I think four of his passes, his assists ended up in three-point shots. And they didn't even have Seth Curry do anything today. This is a scary team, man. This is a scary team. I like it. I like it. They, their bench didn't even give them much, and they still won this game. Now, for the Lakers, they shouldn't be worried either. I mean, it's a team that was undefeated on the road until tonight. And honestly speaking, they just didn't hit shots. That's why the Lakers didn't win. They didn't hit shots. And and Anthony Davis didn't have an Anthony Davis type night again. It's very, it's very, very simple, but it is what it is. Philly looked good until the last couple minutes, and then the Lakers looked like, oh, we are still champions, and then Tobias Harris is a game winner. Very beautiful game. Uh, super happy that it turned out that way because, because I mean, let's be honest. A lot of nasty televised games end up being trash, so to have a good one is, is magnificent. Like I said, I won't get to every single game, but I will recap some of it. Um, Doug McDermott, I'm happy that he found a home in Indiana. When we drafted him in Chicago, I was super excited for it, and now looking back on it, we traded Yusuf Nurkic and Gary Harris for it, so not a great trade. Um, but I knew that Doug McDermott would be able to play a long time in this league. In Indiana, he has been his home. Um, the next game that I got to watch was the Brooklyn Nets versus the Atlanta Hawks, and this is a game that the Atlanta Hawks fans should be walking away and being excited, being happy with it, um, because this was the second game of the back-to-back for them as well, and they went into an overtime game with the Brooklyn Nets. It's like You know, the Brooklyn Nets are really, really good. Their young wings play very well. Um, uh, Trey Young didn't have an amazing game, but he got, he's still doing Trey Young things of drawing the foul. Defense wasn't necessarily terrible, and and they're starting to get some of those guys who have been injured this season back into the rotation. I like Cam Reddish coming off the bench. He looks well and he looks really good in that role. And then they were able to match up pretty well in the small ball lineup because, of course, Clint Capella can't guard anybody on the Brooklyn Nets in the small ball lineup. He's not guarding Jeff Green. Shout out to Jeff Green because he's one of the X factors in this win for the Brooklyn Nets. But Hawks fans should be happy with this one. Second game of back to back. They performed very well. But for the Brooklyn Nets, <laughs> James Harden's best game. It's, it was just a matter of time before he was really finding himself in this system. And a 30-point double-double, close to a triple-double, was, was great. Jeff Green hit some really crucial shots and a good game for both teams. A, a quality, quality game. Um, the next game that we got to watch some of was the end of the the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Raptors. The game, the, the possession that I saw, it went around the horn. It was beautiful ball movement from... A pick and roll with Chris Middleton to Giannis. You hit Giannis. Giannis hits Dante DiVincenzo. Dante DiVincenzo swings it to Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday swings it to an open Chris Middleton, and it was cash. And that felt like the dagger to close it all. But then again, um, Drew Holiday got another shot after that. There was like a layup in the paint. I think it was an and one that ended it. So the Bucks. I- I'm going to give Coach Bud some credit here. Play very well. Timeouts were good. And guess what? Torrey Craig played minutes, and he was closing out the game. Look, who, who called it? That Torrey Craig should be at least getting minutes, you know. Um, The next game, the Spurs ended up getting a win against the Celtics. DeJounte Murray, big-time steal. DeMar DeRose continues to be super underrated. For him to have as consistent of a game, I I feel like he didn't miss a shot. Maybe I'm mistaken. He ended up shooting on the day 7 for 8, 20 points, 21 points, 7 to 6, 5 rebounds. Now, I'm going to say this, and hopefully this doesn't bite me in the butt, but I'm convinced Keldon Johnson's about to be really, really good in this league. I have not watched a ton of Spurs game. I have not tuned into every single Spurs game. Shout out to DeJounte Murray on the big steal, by the way. I haven't watched a ton of games, but every game that I watch of him, his sense for the game is amazing. And a lot of the times, the sense for the game is what can elevate a good player to a really good player. Kelvin Johnson got that, bro. He's everywhere. He crashed the glass like no other at the guard forward position, bro. I'm get, I'm buying I'm buying the stock. I might be 18 games late, but I'm buying a lot of Keldon Johnson stock because that man has been been hooping this season. Um, Devin Booker was out tonight, and I want to talk about this game because this is out of the last five games. The last five games for the Phoenix Suns, they've been up by double digits, and I think only one of them they won. So they continue to choke these big leads. No Devin Booker, of course, but you would think, I think it was a 17-point lead at, at one point, and for some reason, the Thunder always end up being that team to come back 
from the the big old deficit. Lou Dor should be getting all defensive player the all defensive um votes this season because he's been magnificent. Al Horford has his best game, a 21 and 11 game. They had a great game plan against DeAndre Ayton. And a lot of people were tweeting me saying that DeAndre Ayton only took seven shots, seven shots. What's going on, Kenny? Um he was getting double teamed and his teammates don't ever find him. You know what I'm saying? Sure, seven seven shots is unacceptable, but it's hard to shoot over seven shots when you're getting ten touches. I would love to see the advanced stats of how many real touches he got this game because he didn't get many. I wanted to see them win this one because uh, Chris Paul was having such a good game, but nobody else other than him showed up today. And those type of games happen. But losing a 17-point lead to a team that is not – very, I mean, I'm not going to say OKC okay, is not very good because they continue to show that they can kill any deficit. But you get what I'm saying. This is a game that they should have won at the end of the day. My major criticism with DeAndre Aiden is like, I know he did, like I said, he didn't get many touches today. At least that's what it felt like watching this game. But he needs to be more more physical and, and draw more fouls. He's a good foul shooter. He shouldn't end games with two free throw attempts. And I think he's averaging two on a season. And he it has been that for the first three years of his career. He needs to get to the free throw line a little bit more. Um, getting Devin Booker back is going to help some things. But th- there's something to be said, whether it be coaching or whatever, of blowing out of the last, last five games, they've blown four of them by double-digit double digit leads. Something to be said there. But Al Horford, big-time game. Shea Gilles Alexander, big moments. Um, and I still do like um, Hamidou Diallo coming off the bench and playing solid. The next one, I, I before... The Bradley Beal stuff, which was like the title of my video, I wanted to talk about the Mavericks because the Mavericks have been super disappointing so far. And I think this is the first time that Josh Richardson and KP have played together because of virus, injuries, so on and so forth. They look bad, bro. They there's they shouldn't have lost a game to the Utah Jazz without Donovan Mitchell. And shout out to Rudy Gobert for for elevating his play without his, his star being there, almost putting up 30, and he was trying to, bro. He was trying to get that 30. There were a few possessions late in this game where he was just going straight up hoping for a foul <laughs> or hoping to just luckily get the ball in. He wanted that 30-piece bad because I think he's only hit it one time in his career. But uh, he played amazingly. And, and I'm not going to overreact to KP's play because he's just coming back. But it's rough. It is rough right now watching, watching KP play. He's just not looking the same. He's not looking good right now. And, of course, he's supposed to be their second-best player. So... You know, he's supposed to be there. He's supposed to be there. And maybe we jumped the gun just a little bit when it came to the Mavericks. And I know some people put them in that contender category at the beginning of the season. But so far this season, it ain't been that. And the last game is Anthony Edwards having a 25-point performance. And then we also had James Wiseman, two of the top couple picks, going out there and also putting up 25. Kelly Oubre had one of his best games of the season. Wiggins continues to impress. And there's a game where Seth Curry, Stephen Curry really struggled but again, it was the Warriors versus the Timberwolves who were missing so many players and, and so many quality players that you can't really read into it too much other than seeing um, Anthony Edwards at man look good. And James Wiseman, since he's been coming off the bench, he's been feeling more and more comfortable in that team, man. It's some, it's some scary things coming to the Warriors down the line if he's playing at this level and Klay Thompson coming back next season. Of course, Steph Curry going to be Steph Curry and Draymond barking at everybody. Some scary stuff there. I got through the episode. I cannot believe it. Legitimately been trying to record this episode for so long. If you enjoyed, leave it a like. Call game.